<laughs> well, hello everybody. Nice to see you all. So for this little session that we're going to do this afternoon, I thought I might just talk you through, through, through a few things that I use myself uh, in my daily practice. So I'll maybe talk to you a little bit about what I do when I warm up, for instance, a few of the little technical things that I, I try and keep on top of, maybe a few little studies that I play um, and some little tunes that I, that I usually you know, refer, refer to each day just to keep, keep, them, keep on top of things. Now, of course, when we practice, a lot of the time, we want to make it as fun as possible, don't we? That's the whole reason we're here, really, isn't it? Because we love playing these instruments. The reason why we've chose, chosen to play them is because we really enjoy the sound that they make. And so that's what I really want to focus on quite a lot of this afternoon, is trying to make the best sound that we could possibly can on our instruments all the time. So you make a fantastic noise and it's going to please us to hear it. That's the whole, the whole thing about it, isn't it? So the most, thing, the most fun that we can have on these instruments is being the best we can be, isn't it? So when we're really good at them, we can have as much fun as we want. Um, which unfortunately means, we, well, it doesn't unfortunately mean, it means we have to practice more. And I think the key thing is that we need to try and enjoy our practice as much as possible. And so like I said, the, the best way that I try and enjoy my practice is to try and be the best that I can be all the time. So I don't just literally get a piece of music out and play through it. I go, okay, well, I've kind of done that now. I really try and focus on playing it as if I'm maybe even in a concert situation. You know, I maybe think that I'm standing on a concert stage with a big orchestra behind me and I'm about to play a solo. And even if it's just one note that I'm about to play, I try and play it as if it's going to be the best note that I'm ever going to play. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of mindset that I, I try and use. And I think it's a really good one to have because then you, like I say, you enjoy it a lot more. But it, essentially, it's up to you to try and push yourself as much as possible. Your teachers obviously will do amazing jobs at, at that as well. But when you're at home and stuck at home like we are at the moment, the most important thing is you to try and motivate yourself and trying to make yourself as good as you can be. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through a few little things now that I do, which I find help, help me um, to improve. Because we're constantly improving all the time. Now, the thing is... That's really key is um, to make sure that we don't practice any bad habits. It's very easy to fall into bad habits. And so, what I like to do at the beginning of my practice is go right back to basics just to make sure that all those, all those things, all those really basic fundamental things are all working and all in place. And I'm not letting any silliness get in the way of, of my future playing. Because obviously we can't, it holds back our, our improvement if we're not doing the basics correctly. So that's what we're going to talk about at the beginning of, here, of this. So the first thing I like to do before I even start is being a brass player, you need to get all your muscles nice and relaxed. You know, so you, you look at athletes, you look at um, runners and, and football players or anybody like that. They all, none of them just go straight out onto the pitch or out onto the track and start running. They all have to limber up their muscles, make sure they're nice and relaxed so that they don't cause themselves any injuries in the long run. So first of all, what I like to do is get the, to get the blood circulating around these muscles, which essentially is what we rely on the most, isn't it? These muscles here. Is I like to sort of flutter them, I guess we call it. So maybe not directed straight at your computer screens because you might get them a little bit dirty. And you might not be able to see me again afterwards. So maybe just face away a little bit if you want to have a go. But this is what I usually do. So... Just take a nice sort of relaxed breath and just make my, make my lips wobble, I guess you could call it. So I just do this. And you can feel, you can feel all your lips start to tingling, start to tingle, because that's the blood starting to circulate around your lips. And that's really vitally important. So if you want to have a go at that, you're more than welcome. Another thing I used, I did have a lesson once with a guy called Bobby Shue. I don't know whether you've heard of him before. But he's a, he's a world-famous trumpet player who lives in Los Angeles. And he taught me through these techniques. And um, he said another thing that he, he usually does is he puts one hand on one cheek. And when he blows, it relaxes and starts working all the muscles on the other opposite side. And then obviously you do the other thing on the other side. So if you, if you want to do that, put your hand on one side of your face and then do the same thing. You'll feel all the muscles around your, around your lips and around your face start to relax and tingle. And it's really useful.
you all look fantastic. <laughs> so that's that's something that I, that I always start with every single day. I always start with that. Then I usually make sure that I'm breathing properly. Now, breathing is vitally important. It's basically the air that we breathe in is basically the petrol for our instrument. It's basically the fuel that makes the sound appear out at the end of our instrument. And so if we if we breathe in badly and we start creating lots of tension and things in the wrong places, then it's going to affect the way the air comes out of our bodies and through our instruments. So I always I was trying to imagine myself as a, as a, a singer, if you like. So take away the instrument, forget about the instrument completely. And just imagine you're about to take a big breath in and say, ah, as if you're singing. Now, I know you're all very impressed with my singing voice there. But um, so what I'd, what I'd like us to do is take a nice, relaxed breath. I like to think of it as something like a, a reverse sigh, if you like. So imagine if, you, if you're sighing, which I'd imagine is happening quite a lot at the moment, like that, and then just reverse that and you get a nice relaxed breath in. So you get, so you don't get, you don't get any tension. You don't get your shoulders rising right up and blocking your airflow here. You want to try and keep all of this as open as possible. You want to fill your lungs right and right the way around your back. So you've got a really nice relaxed, full lung full of air and then we can dispel that straight out of our mouths and it's there's no tension whatsoever it's really key to try and sound try and be as relaxed as possible it's a really natural thing breathing isn't it we're really good at it we're so good at it we don't even have to think about it usually so we can use that we can use that so let's just take in a nice big breath and just breathe out and blow out sort of naturally Some people have different techniques when they talk about trying to open their throat. They think of their tongue being down in their throat. They think of ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. They say H A W. Oh. So they breathe and they try and breathe as silently as possible when you're breathing in as well. So it keeps it nice and open and relaxed. So we go. Oh. Then we've got lovely, lovely load of nice relaxed fuel for our instruments okay so that's another thing that I, that I like to work on before i even pick up a mouthpiece or an instrument or anything so you can some people can i don't tend to do this too much because i find it it tires your muscles out quite a lot but buzzing just on your lips on its on their own starts the vibration going but i don't like i say i don't tend to do that too much because i always find it's it's quite it's quite um intense on the on the lips so it's quite on the on the muscles it kind of wears you out quite quickly so just a short burst burst of that i like to do as well so remaining thinking about how you breathe doing the same thing over over and over again you can all have a go at that if you wish the way that i sometimes go back if i don't feel that that's working properly is i go back and i i'm, I'm sort of imagine that i've got my mouthpiece on my lips so I'll put my fingers on my lips about the size of my mouthpiece like this can you all see and so then I'll take a breath in and I'll just blow all I'll do is blow air through the through this gap here so it's sort of kind of simulating me holding my instrument but I'm not actually worrying about buzzing I'm just literally blowing and it's teaching your body subconsciously the the way that we blow so I just go Again, it feels nice and free, as if you're blowing through a straw into a cup and you're keeping the bubbles going in, in, the, in, the, in the glass of water. You're going. So it's nice and relaxed and nice and free. OK, so then then I'd get my mouthpiece. Or pick up your mouthpieces if you fancy a little go on your mouthpieces. So I try and hold it as loosely and again as relaxed as possible you'll find i repeat that word quite a lot it needs to feel as natural and as relaxed as possible we don't want any tension tension is the enemy in this in this scenario and relaxa relaxation is the key so now i'm just going to blow one note one continuous note and what we're looking for is something a nice solid centered clean note now if we, and if we can get that on the mouthpiece We'll get it on the trumpet. This is really, really important and really, really useful. 
So again, I'm going to take the same breath. I'm going to do exactly the same things that I've just been working on. And all I'm going to do this time is blow through my mouthpiece instead. So I'm going to go. Just imagine you're still blowing the same way that we blew a minute ago. We're still breathing the same way that we breathe, breathed a minute ago. And then we're going to try and produce a nice, long, juicy, centered note on our mouthpiece. That's what I usually do to start off with. And then you can take it from there. You, move, you can move down a semitone and back up. So. All again, just through the, through the air, blowing exactly the same way. Now, when we come to changing notes, um, I often like to think of it as if I'm a singer. So when you're singing, if you were to sing, uh, try and think about what happens in your mouth. Inside your mouth, your tongue moves slightly, doesn't it? Your tongue moves up and down when, you're, when the notes move up and down. Now that's kind of the same thing that we need to, to use for when we're buzzing and when we're doing our lip flexibilities and things like that on the trumpet. So if, if you're singing, oh, 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 you can notice that your tongue is moving up and down in your mouth. We're not changing the way we're, we're blowing or breathing or the air's coming out. We're just, we're doing the same thing as if we're playing one note, but then our tongue's moving up and down. So if we were to sing, ah, ee, ah, ee, ah, ee, ah, ee, ah, ee, you can notice that or the, our tongue's moving the whole time. Ah, ee, ah, ee, ah, ee, ah. That's another thing. Sometimes if, if, I've, if I feel like I've, I've sort of, I've lost the plot a little bit in terms of lip flexibilities, I always go back to this because it really focuses back on the simpleness of it, the simple nature of it all. Sometimes when you get bogged down, you tend to just keep getting more and more intense and you press it on your lips and you try and squeeze out the notes and it just, it's just making it worse and worse and worse. I find if I go back to something like this, keep it simple, always revert back to as if you're singing, because singing is like the most natural of, the, of producing a note that we can do. So we always go back to that. So let's go back on our mouthpieces and just this time I'm going to go from a middle note up to a higher note and then back down again, all through using my, my tongue. <sighs> So you can all have a go at that if you want. Don't forget, take the same breath. Let's keep those really good habits. Take a nice big breath and blow as if we're playing one long note. And then we move up with our tongue and down with our tongue as if we were singing. It's almost like our lips are like our vocal cords if we were singing. And it's like a, the the bell is like, the bell of our trumpet is like our mouth, if you like, it's where the sound comes out, isn't it? Um, yeah, so there's, I've got loads and loads of different techniques and drills and things that I do of those, well, if I feel like I need to work on those. Because that's another thing, when I'm, when I'm working during the day, especially at the moment, when you have to, when you have to touch up on certain things, I always like to have a, like, as if, like a tool belt of studies and, and drills and things like that. So if I know something isn't working, I can always go back to, well that, I know that this fixes that. And you'll find it's really important to try and just, to get through as many of these as possible. They, you might not like all of them, but it's, it's really, really good and really useful for, to try as many as possible. And then you pick, you can pick along with your teacher, the one that best suits you, the one that makes it the most fun for you, the one that you enjoy doing the most. Because I've got tons and tons and tons here, a lot of them I found more boring than others, but some of them I actually find quite fun to play. So there are some fun ones out there. You will find them, I, I promise. And they're all really, really useful. Um, another thing, just as an aside to that. So we're talking about sound, how we create our sound. We make a nice, solid, clear sound. Now, what another thing that I think maybe is the most important thing is knowing what you want to sound like. So I would say the most important thing is to listen to loads and loads of different, not just trumpet players, but any instrumental players and try and think about 
what sounds they make and whether you like it, whether you don't like it and why. And then try and copy the ones that you do like. So for instance, when I was your age, I loved Winton Marsalis when he played, you know, listening to Winton play all, all, his, all of his jazz stuff. I loved listening to him. So I desperately tried to copy him as much as I could. I mean, you know, to very <laughs> successful levels. But then you listen to you listen to something else, you listen to a Star Wars soundtrack, for instance, and you'll hear Maurice Murphy playing this fantastic trumpet piece with this amazing sound. So you think, well, I wanna, I wanna sound like that. I wanna try and copy that. So it's really important to have, a, have an aim, have a goal, if you like, to, to, as to what you want to sound like. And I think the only way you can do that is by listening to as many different players as you possibly can, and then experimenting, trying it all yourself, trying to emulate that, trying to copy that. Because that keeps that keeps you motivated. Then that keeps you gives you a goal, gives you something to aim at. Wow! Listen to him; he sounds fantastic. Or her; she sounds amazing. I must sound like that. How do I do that? I might, and to keep keep trying to inspire sort of yourself, if you like. Listen, listen, listen all the time. So yeah. So like I said, trying to produce and then trying to produce that sound every single time you pick, you pick the instrument out of the box. Whenever you, whenever you pick it up, you always want to try and play. The best note that you could possibly play. Okay, so next in my warm-ups, once I've done a little bit of mouthpiece, I'd get to playing some long notes. I play some. I, I do play some long notes, but I realised that one thing when I was growing up, I was just told to play some long notes by some of my teachers, and I didn't really get it into my head why I was doing it. I didn't really understand what the benefit was for me, and so. But when I got older. And I started to think about it. Um, I appreciated it a lot more. And once you start thinking about trying to pre trying to produce the best sound that you can possibly make all the time, there's a challenge there all of a sudden. And so the, our, our competitive nature, you just instantly want to try and get better and better all the time. Try and play the best note. So I would just play. I would just try and emulate exactly the same thing as I've done on my mouthpiece, but now on the trumpet. So I want to try and keep that simple techniques going. So again, I'm going to take the same breath. I'm just going to blow the same, exactly the same way as I would have done on my mouthpiece, but now I'm just going to play it through my trumpet. I'm going to hold it with my left hand. There's going to be trying to take as much tension out as possible. Don't, don't grip it really hard. Just hold it nice and loosely. And then your hand on the top, obviously with your fingers over the top of the valves. We don't want to create any more tension. That's what I'm trying to get at. So don't, you don't need to hold it too, too, too tight. So here we go again. I'm just going to play a middle G, okay? So I'm going to take, take the same breath. So if you go just trying to play a middle G and try and keep a nice, solid, centred sound for maybe 15, 20 seconds, taking the same breath, stay nice and relaxed. Don't use your tongue yet either. You don't need to use your tongue. Just concentrate on blowing the air. The constant, just the airflow is really important. Just try and make a lovely, lovely sound. The best sound that you can. Lovely. So then like I did on the mouthpiece, I went down a semitone, I did the same thing. I did the same thing, I'll go. Again, I try and make it sound like it's all one continuous note. So you're just playing, making a lovely, lovely sound as, as nice as you could. There's, a one, there's one good thing that I use to make sure that my throat isn't closed up. Because um, sometimes that happens. You, you, it just starts happening. You think, oh, I can, I can feel the tension. So to start that up, sometimes, sometimes if you just... If you just sit there and you, you say, open, nice and loudly, and then you whisper, closed. You can feel the difference, closed. You can feel your, your throat tightening up. So what you want to try and do is, is emulate the feeling of when you're saying, open, nice and loudly. And that, and that opens up your throat. And you try and, try and incorporate that into when you're playing. You can't keep it nice and open. So the long notes I use, I, I mean, when I was growing up, and it's still still relevant now, but um, 
I use I use this book. I don't know if anybody's seen this before. It's called the Arben. But that's got loads and loads of long note studies and things like that in it, which is still, I think, still important today and relevant. But I've also got lots of, I mean, you'll see up here, I've got, this is my, um, this is my folder of warm-up techniques. I've got all these, uh, this is just, just mouthpiece thing, mouthpiece, mouthpiece drills and, and similar, similar exercises like that. So this one, for instance, at the top, it's along the same line. So it's all leading on from that kind of thing. So the one at the top, and what I'm trying to do there is, is like I was saying at the start, I'm trying to keep it as one continuous sound, one, one continuous long solid centered sound trying to make the best sound that i can so there's nothing like this there's no i'm trying to blow all the way through it because that's going to set me up to make playing other pieces when we're nicely warmed up a lot easier and that's what we want if it's easier we can get a lot more fun out of it can't we so then you can go through you can do that in lots of different keys if you wish so you can start on a c or you can start on a b or you can start on an a you can start on anything I mean, you don't have to play the whole thing either. You could just do the first little bit, if you like. Like I said, you can, you can adapt these to any sort of way you wish, just to make it more interesting. That's, that's what I tend to do a lot of the time. If I find I'm doing the same thing over and over every day, I love trying to mix it up a little bit by changing them a little bit, but with the same, with the same mindset and the same principle. There's also another one that I do that's along the same sort of path, which goes. So that's another one, all just concentrating on long, making lovely long phrases. Now what, what I try to do, I try and challenge myself to try and make it sound musical as well, rather than it just sounding like a, like a boring study or something, I try and make it sound a little bit more interesting. Again, so it just takes it away from just being a, oh, here comes another exercise that I've got to do. How boring. So I try and, try and make it a bit more interesting. It's really great to try and put your own sort of stamp on all of these things. Ironically, this is by a man called Stamp as well, this, these techniques. That's a nice little segue, isn't it? But yeah, so, so yeah, always try and make some music out of everything that you do, because it will always help you in the long run. So that's, that's, that's long notes and, that's, and, and blowing properly. I find that's really key. It just sets me up for the day. All the, every, every day I do that. Um, then I'll move on to something a little bit more exuberant. I'd work on my technique a little bit. So you've got just to check that everything's working. I just play play a scale because that's the best way to find out whether how the range is working. So I would first of all try and do like a, a slurred scale, maybe a chromatic scale, just starting on a C. We could just do one octave. We just go. something simple like that just to, but then we can really concentrate on trying to make the best sound that we can do you want to have a go at that if you, if you want to <clears throat> another thing i like to do just to check whether the I'm feeling the right way about my blowing as I'll take, I'll take the mouthpiece out of my trumpet and I'll just take a breath and blow through the trumpet. And that's the kind of feeling that I want to try and copy, even though when I've got the mouthpiece there. So I try and just go. 
keep everything the same, but just blow, just so it feels really free and nice and easy. And the more, more free and easy it feels, the more relaxed and natural the sound that you'll make. <laughs> I find that's really helpful. So then I'll try and play some studies. I've got some study books and things that I use that I always go to. And these are the sort of things that, I, that I'll play, but then I'll, to make them interesting, because I love playing jazz. I mean, I, obviously all these things apply to, to every style of music. This is the, these are the fundamentals of playing. But because I like playing jazz and to try and make them appeal to me a little bit more, I change the rhythms a lot of the time so I can work on my, my jazz rhythms. So for instance, this, this one that I use quite a lot, again, I find it, it, it really works on your breathing and your blowing, but it also works on your, your fingering as well because there's a lot more involved in the fingering. So here's the, here's the thing I use. <laughs> So you can play as fast or as slow as you like. But then to make it interesting for me, I try and add some different rhythms. So then, I'll, then I'll try and bring in the tongue. So we haven't used the tongue at all yet to articulate anything. I try and leave that till the very end. When I, once I know my airflow is working, I'm breathing properly, my lips are buzzing nicely, then I'm going to try and bring in the tongue a little bit. Again, we want to try the tongue not to get too tense. We want it to try and keep it nice and relaxed. So everything's nice and relaxed. There's no tension whatsoever. But then I'll introduce that on one of these sorts of, these sort of um, studies, just to emphasize a few, each four quavers maybe. <laughs> This is a book by um, Herbert Clark, his name is. It's quite an old book, but um, these, these I find really useful and you can adapt them really well. I know it's quite hard to, to kind of copy that when you just heard it from me playing it like that. But you could just take the, if you wanted to have a go, you could just take the first, first bar, for instance, which is starting on a G, we go. And then you could change the rhythm of that, that, just that one bar if you wanted to. So it's just G, A, B, G, A, B, C, A, G. do that starting on loads of different notes and playing lots of different rhythms but don't forget practice good habits so always practice the breathing always practice the the way that you're blowing all those kind of simple things it's really important to try and stay on top of good habits and um, there's another good another i'll show you another good book that i use a guy called gerard presenter if you haven't heard heard him he's well worth checking out he's a fantastic amazing um, British um, jazz trumpet player and flugel player. He lives over in Denmark, but he's got this. He's got this book, one of them, and this is basically. It says it's a modern approach to playing the trumpet. It's called. That's kind of the same idea as as taking those kind of um, studies and using some different articulations, different rhythms, just to. And it makes things a lot more interesting. I find it's a lot more fun than you get to play things that appeal to me more. Anyway. I mean, they might they may not appeal to you that's what i was trying to say at the beginning because you might want to play classical music you might want to play jazz music you might want to play i don't know west end musical <laughs> things like that but you need to have a basic knowledge of all of those things and then just become fantastic at the one that your favorite basically if you because 
that's that's the key. I think because if you wanted to do like West End music, for instance, there's lots and lots of different styles of music that you need to know about. You need to be able to have a, a little bit of basic basic knowledge to be able to play them. But like I said, if pick the one that's your favourite, of course, and then become fantastic at that. That's the that's the way to do it. Um, Can I ask Russell, how long in a in a practice would you spend warming up? Well, of course, it, at the moment, I, I mean, you could spend all uh, well, probably half an hour to an hour if you wanted to. I mean, I, I always find it depends because different every day is different. I'll, do, I'll wake up one day and my, my fingers will feel sluggish. So then I'll work on some technique to get those going. Other days, my lip flexibilities won't be right because my, my chops aren't feeling the same as they did yesterday. So I'd work more on them. So I find there's no, for me, there's no strict, right, this is what I have to do every day. There is obviously a basic version of that, but then I'll do more of this, more of, or more of that, or less of that if it's feeling okay. So it varies. It varies a lot. But I'd spend... I mean, I think what I find what I found key over the years is to rest as much as you play as well. So lots and lots of short bursts, I find a lot more practical and useful than so just smashing two hours worth of practice in and not taking a break at all. Because then you're just tired and you're and you're knackered and you can't then you and it affects how you feel the next day. So I'd I'd warm up say for half an hour, forty to five minutes doing these little things. And then maybe take half an hour off and come back and then and then do a study or something and then spend another three quarters of an hour playing some studies and then have another break for half an hour, three quarters of an hour and then come back and play some pieces. You know, it's, it, I think taking short breaks and playing, playing as, resting as much as you play is, is really important, especially for building muscle strength and, and endurance and things and it will help support your high register and all that sort of business. I find that really useful, yeah. But I mean, like like I say, you could spend as 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 much time as you like playing these. I mean, look at these these mouthpiece drills go on forever. I had a teacher, I had a, met a teacher at college who used to get me to try and do four hours of just mouthpiece drills like this every single day. He wanted me to do that. I think I did it a total of zero times. <laughs> I think I got to about I got to about an hour. And uh, yeah, yeah, lost the will to live, I think is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't, like I was saying, it just doesn't suit everybody. It suited him. He, he loved playing the mouthpiece. You know, he could quite happily sit on a mouthpiece and play mouthpiece for four hours every day. And I couldn't. <laughs> it just, it, yeah, it drove me mad a little bit. So I found something else that, that would work in a similar way. I still do the mouthpiece. I still find it really useful. And obviously, I've still got all the things that he gave me. So I do go back to them. And he, he even made me buy, buy a play-along CD. So there is such a thing as a mouthpiece play-along CD. I have it here somewhere. Can you imagine? A backing track and then just you play a mouthpiece. I mean, I'm sure it's fun. I mean, if you, you might enjoy that. That's what I mean. It's, it's up to you. But I felt a little bit silly doing it. But you may not. You may enjoy it. I'm trying to see if I've got it. I don't think I have. Uh, students um, are all on here. Do you, any of you have any questions for us all, at all? And if you do, if you just unmute yourself... And then ask the question, and then we'll meet you after. All Liam? Right. It's more have to do with my trumpet itself. I've yeah. noticed that the third valve here is a bit loose than the others, and it's not pushing that mark correctly. I think I've had this problem with you, Mr. Lancaster. Isn't that right, Mr. Lancaster? That's right, Liam. Well, I think Mr. Jones is probably the man to talk to <laughs> with his workshop there. <laughs> you should be able to have a look at that. I, can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cause really, really be able to tell having a look just from here. It doesn't cause a major breaking in this. Yeah, I mean, Liam, without actually having been able to see your trumpet, that would be hard to fix. But the first thing I would recommend is to take all your valves out and give them a good clean. And not just the valves themselves, but inside the actual valve casings. And yeah. I presume all of you are cleaning your instruments during the lockdown. Of course. Oh, I see Mia looking at her mum, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there any more questions, guys? Because we've got a couple of minutes left. So it'd be really good for you to try and uh, use Russell's wealth of experience and knowledge and ask any questions you may have. As I say, just make sure you unmute yourselves before doing that. I'll just say, of course, the other thing that I do at the, at the end, once I've done that, is, is play some tunes that I really like playing. You know, you can re reward yourself after you've done, the, done some things that feel like the, that you've done a bit of hard work. Play a lovely tune. Play a lovely tune, then have a break. 
and try and set yourself a goal maybe. Play that lovely tune without any mistakes. And then give yourself a pat on the back and go and have a break. And then come back and do it again. <laughs> but that's the thing. I always try and aim for little, have little targets. Give myself goals, things to aim at. You know, play, play a nice tune, see if I can play it well. And until I do that, then I go and have a break. But it's all about trying to enjoy it as much as you can, I'd say. Uh, how long have you been playing for? Oh, uh, how long have we been playing for? I've been playing for 30, 33 years. I started playing when I was six, so you could do the maths. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, a long, a long time now. A long, long time. How long have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing since year four, so uh, four years. Wow, fantastic. Just in your grade four, up, Sam. Grade four, fantastic. Yeah. Good man. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's good. Good. That's what, that's what I mean. That's the main thing. Keep up with it. Keep practicing. Keep smiling. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> just to round up a little bit but um, do come back please if you want any questions but um, with it being looking at the time here 5.39 with a minute to go what Russell's gone through there is, is the basics of playing for you uh, I've just made a couple of, of notes as he's gone through because one of the most important things is always make the best sound you can and what Russell spoke a lot about there was making sure that you enjoy your playing and enjoy the sound that you make never pick up your trumpet or, or brass instrument uh, and just play a note without thinking about your note. Uh, as Russell said, basics are the key. So doing those basics over and over is what's going to make you a really, really good player. Any other questions? As I say, make sure you do unmute yourself before asking. I'm looking through my screens. Could I, could I ask Russell, is the, uh, is the mouthpiece backing track, um, the play along mouthpiece work, is that the James Thompson? It is. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. got that one. <laughs> Have you got it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's quite. It, it, it is. It is very good. Like you said, with the the vocalising in your head, it really yeah. helps playing the mouthpiece, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. So really cool. yeah. I don't use the whole book. I use about the first seven or eight <laughs> exercises. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Like I say, um, I've, I'm I'm one of these people that find little bits of things more useful than slogging all the way through the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I'd just like to say thank it, you as well for this. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, like I say, every, everyone's different in every walk of life. So you'll all, you'll all cope with things differently. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Russell. I think we'll wrap up there. I know that some of you are coming on to the six o'clock session as well. Uh, you are welcome to come and join the six o'clock session. Russell will be going through some slightly more advanced things there. So I'm looking at Ben Bly and some others who I know very well might benefit Matthew Fiddler and Noah. If you do want to come to the second session, you are welcome to as well. I understand some of you have other things. Someone mentioned a birthday party they have to go to. Um, but can we all say thank you to Russell? It's been fantastic to have him here. As I say, in Sully Holler, I think you're very, very lucky uh, with the support of Simpson to have these workshops. As far as I'm aware, we're the only music service in the country that are doing these workshops and we're doing them every single week. We had a drum workshop last week, we've got a saxophone next week as well. And to have someone of Russell's experience and wealth of knowledge to come and actually talk through to you guys and let you know what he does daily uh, on his basics to, to keep him in prime shape is something which will hopefully inspire you guys to, to play during this lockdown period. So I don't think we can actually clap for you Russell because you weren't here so can we all give Russell a big <laughs> wave to say thank you <laughs> and I'll give one last chance for any more questions if anybody has them and I'll give a little countdown five four three two they've all gone shy in that case I will let Russell have a cup of tea before the next session at six o'clock thank you everybody it's really nice to see you if only on a screen I hope we're back making music together soon thanks again to Russell Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye, everyone.